I've seen Oppenheimer three times. I really liked it. Have you seen it? Yet? No, I haven't seen it. Yet. Oh, cool. He's just had a baby, so he yeah. he doesn't he doesn't go out anymore. I I would say uh, focus on the baby. Yeah, I'd but say I, that I was can't a good that was a good move. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, by the way. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. What, That's what, incredible. What, how long did you work on that film? I've seen that the the art department built literal towns. I know Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. is like, you know, I want to know what it was like working with him. Uh, yes. How was it? It was all just incredible. It was, it was an incredible experience. Um, I kind of felt, I feel like we all felt the exact same way, which is like, why are we here? How did this, someone must have made a mistake. And then as soon as we got onto the set, we realized, obviously, we're in incredible hands with Christopher Nolan. Um, so my journey with it is basically like I, these auditions went out. Um, I, everybody basically was asked to submit a self-tape if they wanted to audition. Uh, and there, were, there was a monologue from, I think, the theory of everything, not from Oppenheimer, just kind of dummy sides. Oh. And the monologue was all about um, explaining how a black hole works. And then there was a scene that was very much probably from some other movie that's not Oppenheimer. That's all about like government men covering up a big thing. <laughs> mm. um, and I, we got the sense that if you, uh, if they liked your monologue, you became a scientist, and if they liked your scene, then you became you know a military person yeah, who's yeah, very yeah. much on like Matt Damon's side of the tracks. Mm. Uh, so submitted the monologue. A uh, few weeks went by, didn't really hear much, which usually means like probably didn't get it. And then I got a call out of nowhere from my reps just being like, you got it. Uh, there's this guy named Richard Feynman, real scientist, um, who you look, you know, enough like, uh, and you're, you're in there. And I was like, that's, that's the greatest thing in the world. So I, all of a sudden I'm in New Mexico. And uh, I remember my first day so vividly just being so nervous because I had like one line. And the guy, Richard Feynman, has a very specific... Uh, Far Rockaway Queens, like New York accent. And I would like, so I listened to him, like he has the most distinct voice. And I remember being like, does he want me to do this? Is that going to be like too much? Um, and I don't really know Christopher Nolan at this point. So I remember just being right before going, because I never, I didn't know when to ask him. I was like, hey, uh, is it cool? He has like a very distinct voice. Is it cool if I, if I do it? And he just goes, surprise me. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, um, it's the first time you really like, you had a proper chat to Christopher. Yeah, there I mean, like no- I met him, I met him once uh, when I went to Universal in LA to the only time I ever read the script uh, uh, front to back was when I went to Universal and they basically like give you the script and it's like this huge thick thing and they basically put you in a windowless room and they're like turn your phone off and take as long as you need to read it but that was the only time because they didn't want any leaks so that's the only time you could you had the opportunity and the rest of the time I just kind of had my pages um you know, which weren't that many in the grand scheme of it all. Wow. But um, and then you're just on. Then set I, I and you d- have to give him a quick rundown of your character. And what you yeah, I mean, I, I did. I did briefly meet him when I did like a costume fitting, and he just kind of came in. I didn't know he was going to come in, and I was like, "Oh my god, hi, hi, hello! <laughs> I'm in a jacket that's way too big. Hello, nice to meet you, sir. You're a hero." Um, and so yeah, he was like, "Surprise me!" And then uh, I, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm butchering his accent. And then. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did it and he didn't say anything. So off to the races we went. And I think the the craziest part about it was there's so many crazy parts and I, I don't know how much time we have. But um, also, I wasn't able to talk about any of this because we just had a strike. Yeah. So now I'm now yeah, I'm actually yeah. able to. You can, yeah. you can vomit it all out, please. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I do a lot of bongo playing in the movie. I'm more of a percussionist than I am an actor in Oppenheimer. Spoilers, Tom. Uh, mm-hmm. yes, uh, I, I, play, I play the bongos. <laughs> Um, the real guy that I played, Richard Feynman, he loved playing the bongos. That was like his thing. And uh, the, David Krumholtz, who's also in the movie, he's amazing in the movie. How's, how's he's he, is he a cool guy to, to He's hang so out with? cool. He, he plays bongos in not one, but two different Grateful Dead cover bands. <laughs> and he taught me how to play the bongos yes. while we're like at our hotel, like in the lobby. Just like, you gotta just, you gotta feel it. He was so awesome. <laughs> um, and I remember uh, I had to play bongos in this one like Christmas party scene where there's all these like insane uh, like acclaimed actors walking in for like two seconds Kenneth and Brenner's doing something returns. amazing. They bring Kenneth Ken- Branagh. Yeah, from Kenneth Europe. Branagh's in it, and Emily Blunt's there. Matt Damon's there. It, it's crazy, and I'm just like bibbidi bop. Um, but after that scene, we were shooting another day, and I remember we're we're talking. We're all talking. Him and Nolan and like. 
50 scientists uh, like me. And then he stops everything cold, looks at me and just goes, I saw the dailies for the bongos. You really impress me. And I'm like, <laughs> never in my life did I think I'd get a bongo compliment from Christopher Nolan. Yeah, but here I am. And I'm yeah. so There's, he, there's, I'm there's so moments happy. where he says things that feel like, because he's essentially Batman. Like, you know, and that he just walks yeah. around in this suit. He's more Bruce Wayne, really. Like, no one really knows anything about him. But sometimes in press, he says things like, Someone will go, hey, you like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, don't you? But yeah, Rod yeah, and he's Rick like Rules. Roderick Rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he. What is he doing? It's funny. So like, and he goes on Peloton well, and we're, stuff. We're, like, we're all like, we're the whole time. The all the scientists, you know, the people who are like like me, who have like two or three lines in the movie. Um, we're all kind of like, we don't deserve to be here. Why are we here? But we kind of you get the sense uh, while you're shooting, like he really does his research. He yeah. does know, like who everybody is and he does cast you for a very specific reason and it was it was amazing to watch him work he's so he's so incredibly talented just to watch him do this <laughs> watch yeah he's do that jack is doing the uh, was, famous director thing yeah. where you get your hands and make a frame so you can make a frame he it's, did that or, or, w- watching him point and being like <laughs> oh yeah over there um, no but the confidence he had cuz i'm used to television where the goal is to get as much coverage of a scene as possible and if you don't know what that is it's like you know a shot of one character and a re- reverse shot of another character yeah. and then like something uh, a shot from another character from uh, from the profile or, or, or from dead on or a wide shot of the entire scene from like way back in the room and sometimes you have like multiple characters and you have to get every angle because tv is all about editing and and making sure that you have something to work with it later in, in the cut and uh and that's great. You have to cover your bases when you're doing TV, and I, I totally get that. But he's such a confident, incredible filmmaker. I remember we shot a scene. I'm like maybe in the background. I don't even know if you see me, but it's the scene where Killian is like looking at the slides for for like the results of the bomb on Hiroshima. Yeah. Big scene. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you're doing a movie about Oppenheimer, sure. Um, shot it in two setups, so that's two shots, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. only used one of them. Yeah. So I remember thinking like, oh, if this was TV, it'd be like a shot of like the crowd and then a shot of like Killian going you know, in on his face, like dead on and like to the side. And then like the people showing the slides, you don't even see the slides mm. yeah. in the movie, which is probably good because that, that's very gnarly, obviously, but um, and horrible. Uh, but it's uh, I was just amazed that day. I was like, oh, we're going to like go home soon. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is really- like before anyone.